of, of Ezekiel leaves the temple because, because God's people aren't there. They've gone into exile, and God goes into exile with them. That, that's just a sign, a, a picture showing that, that we are never alone, that God goes into the deepest, darkest, hardest times of our lives, and he goes with us there, that he is with us. You know, these are themes and situations that we in North America honestly find it hard to relate to. We don't really understand exile, the deep loss that comes from violence, at least for the most part, or the feelings of hopelessness and grief expressed in this psalm. In Montreal, we had members of the church there who came from Pakistan and who came from the Democratic Republic of, of the Congo. And, and they shared some of the stories of the violence and the persecution that they experienced there. See, most of them left family behind. And a lot of those family members continued to experience persecution and, and violence and horrible things. They carried soul and, and heart scars that were only made deep, deeper and, and more painful every time they heard news from family back home. Family who were unable to, to leave, to come to a safe country. Some of it's because our own immigration system, you know, needs some, some work in that as well. And I remember sitting with them and, and seeing their tears. I heard stories I can't share here because of how disturbing they are. Just because they're Christians. It's the only reason they were persecuted. As a church, we supported a, a Congolese pastor's sister who had been abused so badly she needed a whole series of, of surgeries to get better again. And then she had an opportunity to come to Canada and she said, no, I'm staying there. I know that Jesus is with me and I know that Jesus wants me to, to walk alongside other women who've gone through what I've gone through, to give them hope, to let them know that Jesus never gives up on them, that Jesus is with them and that they can be blessed in their persecution because of how much Jesus loves them. She said how much she's grateful for Jesus. As a church, you know, we began talking with our local member of parliament. We've been, we started talking with Immigration Canada and saying, you know, there's got to be a better way. We, we've got to let the world know about these stories. We can't just not do anything. And we spend a lot of time praying as a church for, that, for those families. And we got to know the Congolese community better to see how we could offer support and encouragement and, and help them get their stories out into the public. See, those who live where there's real persecution, they understand this psalm's cry for justice. We hear these verses and, and many of us don't quite understand the deep, deep cry for, for vengeance. Though I've walked with people who have been abused even here in Canada uh, and who understand because, you know, even our own justice system doesn't always work. We are flawed human beings and, and that's part of living in this world. But most of us don't understand the hurt, the brokenness, the need for justice so that we can begin to find some healing, some hope. And that's right now why in North America we're in this serious conversation about you know, race and racism and all these other things. This is why we have members of our church family who, who, who stand up for, for right to life because of the violence that, that happens in, in abortion and that. And the pain that so many of those mothers and families feel afterwards. And, and I've I've talked to, to people who said, why, didn't, why wasn't I told more about what would happen? These are, these are heart cries to God. Remember, Lord, don't let them get away with what they've done against us. 
No, happy is the one who repays you, Babylon, according to what you've done for us. And the anger and the pain that comes out of their hearts. Happy is the one who dashed them against the rocks. You know, it's easy for us to remind people, you know what? The vengeance is mine, says the Lord. But when you sit down with them and you hear the horrific stories and experiences they've lived through, you start to get an understanding of where this verse is coming from. And God wants to hear our cries because God is a God of justice. He wants rightness. He wants righteousness, justice to be part of of this world and how this world operates. So for many of those those members in, in Montreal and others I have known across Canada, Knowing that God is a God of justice actually filled them with a lot of hope. So how does, again, a question is kind of slow down and and pause and maybe talk about, does knowing God is a God of justice give you hope? And in what way? How does knowing God is a God of justice give you hope? So just take a couple moments. remember studying this psalm in a Bible study and somebody said, you know, this is all fine and good that we read this psalm, but how does this psalm fit, fit us today? How does it work for us? And I remember as we talked, you know, somebody said it reminds us that we're part of a worldwide church where many of our brothers and sisters are experiencing violence and persecution even today, even right at this moment that we're worshiping God in safety and hope and comfort and peace, there are those around the world who are worshiping in in, in secret, who are worshiping afraid that they'll be caught, but trusting God so much and loving God and Jesus so much that they can't help but worship, knowing that it may even cost them their lives. So Karina Kruminski suggests that that there are a number of ways that that Psalm 137 is really important for us. She says the first first response is is to reject sentimentality. And you're going, what? Well, you know, it's it's like watching these commercials on TV for for all these kids who are going hungry and, and, and who are homeless and everything else. And if we give a few dollars, they can be helped and everything else. And and you know what? We get a little bit uncomfortable, but we feel bad for them. So, But then it's easier just to turn the channel. So she's saying, don't turn the channel in your head. Don't turn the channel in your heart. Feel the pain. Now feel the hurt. Let the Holy Spirit work inside of you. You know, it's, this is signs that, that the world's not the way it's supposed to be. And we're called to make a difference in this world. Allow the uncomfortableness of this psalm. You know, sit in your heart. Ask God how to pray and support our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. And then the second response is to be a wise one on the edge of the outside. And, and I had to think about that one. And, and I realized as I, as I read more of, of, of her study of this psalm that she's saying, you know what, we have to be aware of the, of the violence, of the persecution, of the injustice, of the oppression that happens right within our own communities and our, our own country as well. We can't just speak to other parts of the world without acknowledging that, you know, what stuff happens here as well that we need to be aware of. And we need to be critics. And critics not in just pointing out what's wrong, but, but critiquing saying, you know what, these are areas where where we do not live well with each other, where there is injustice and oppression, and these are ways that we can become healthier together. These are ways that, that we can grow as a people. We need to be able to confess our own sin and the sin around us, to tell of Jesus who calls us back to God and teaches us the way to walk in this world and, and be who Jesus calls us to be. 
And Jesus is fully God and fully human, so he understands, you know, what this world is like. And he takes our sin and he takes our brokenness to the cross. And he takes it into the grave. He rises up to establish a kingdom, a kingdom of justice and, and righteousness, a kingdom of peace and forgiveness, of grace and, and possibility. And Jesus then gives us his spirit to equip us to live out his values, his kingdom, to, to grow it and to call others to follow him with us. And then that's that whole alternative uh, version of the new creation that we need to we need to speak out to, to to say you know what the world's not the way it's supposed to be, but here's here's who God here's what Jesus calls this world to be like. You know we have to we have to be able to articulate you know that that Jesus. Jesus calls for us to live well with each other. He, lives, uh, he, he calls us to, to, to be filled with grace and forgiveness and, and mercy and, and all that. That is really important, especially in our personal relationships. But Jesus also calls us to be critics of what's wrong. So he went to the religious leaders and he said, you know what, you do all the religious stuff but you still allow oppression. You still allow widows and you don't take care of them. You, you don't take care of the orphans. You don't take care of the foreigners. You, you just care about yourself. So Jesus gives us a whole alternate kingdom and he gives us these beautiful pictures of what his kingdom's all about. I encourage you, read the gospels. And there's some beautiful glimpses at the end of Revelation as well of, of, what it's, of what God's kingdom is like. And then lastly, Karina calls us to be a voice. A voice for the marginalized and the weak, to be willing to take risks, to pick up, speak up for the oppressed and, and those exposed to violence and persecution. This is prophet language, and we are called to be prophets. This is Jesus' language of loving our neighbors as ourselves, of, of sitting by the rivers to weep with them and listen to their stories. But Jesus said, this is also going to be normal. In Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. You know, as we work for righteousness and justice, you know, God gives us the strength and the wisdom through the Holy Spirit uh, to, to know how to move forward, to take steps one by one. But there is also that, 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 that blessing and, and warning, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You see, when we're persecuted because we follow Jesus, that means we're being persecuted because we're calling the world to, to live as Jesus calls us to live. And we're not ashamed. And we, we work to create that world around us, starting right here in our own community. But we do look ahead as well to, to the day when we can sit on the banks of the river of God, singing his songs with all, all our brothers and sisters in the faith. We can sit there in peace. We can sit there in the shade of the trees of life in the presence of God. We need to grow our imagination, however, of, of who the church is and remember that we're part of a, a much larger church than what we experience here in Lacombe. We are part of a church that is all over the world, a church that uh, often worships in safety and peace, but we can't forget our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted, who are even losing their lives because they follow Jesus. And we need to pray that, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong and, and that their witness may help others to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior as well. So we need to keep them in our prayers. 
Psalm 137, even today, even today is powerful. And it speaks to the way the world so often is. So, this is a call to remember. A call to remember our brothers and sisters. And to keep them in our prayers. But then also to work for justice. And for wholeness. And for healing and health. Wherever we are as well. Amen. Lord, thank you for these psalms that, that take us out of our comfortable places and open our eyes to the reality of so much of what the world is like. To know that, to know that we too may face persecution, but that we will be blessed because you are with us in both the good and in the hard times. But in the hard times, when you keep us strong, we become a powerful witness to you. So Lord, bless our brothers and sisters who are in the middle of persecution. Give them the strength and the words to continue to confess that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And Lord, may their words resonate in the hearts of many even among those that persecute them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a, an opportunity to partner with uh, many uh, organizations. And one of the organizations we partner with is Reframe Media. And it used to be called the Back to God Hour International. And, and what they do is they... They use social media to spread the word of Jesus into all countries of the world. And many, many of those who are, are part of the persecuted church have come to faith because of Reframe Media. So this is, this is who we are uh, giving our offerings to today. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for, for those who had a vision for, for, for preaching your word around your word around the world and, and using the technology and the gifts of, of the social media to, to be able to speak into lives of, of people we may never know or even meet, but people who in secret are still able to learn more about you, to hear to hear of who Jesus Christ is, who their Savior is. And Lord, how Reframe Media is, is a source of strength and hope. So Lord, we pray that our offerings may, may, may help Reframe Media to, to spread God's word, your word around the world, and to strengthen those who are in the middle of persecution. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand for God's parting blessing. So go out into the world in peace. And in Christ's name, be the humble who make others proud, the poor who have riches to share, the weak who help others be strong, the empty who overflow with loving kindness, the generosity of the love of God, the treasure of the grace of Christ Jesus, and the buoyant health of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. May the Lord be with you this week.